Welcome, GDLers, to another edition of Scripting Adventure. This is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim, and in this edition, we're going to be adding a picture to our library part. We're going to array our dimensional inputs around it to make it nice and easy to use. So let's script some GDL. Now, as I stated earlier, the list items are how we like to put the attribute selections in our user interface now. We don't really do it this way anymore. So I'll get rid of these and zhuzh up this a little bit because it's a little bit dull, isn't it? Comment all that. Review. Right, so let's have a think about how we actually want this to appear, what we want it to look like. And I think what we'll do is we'll introduce a picture. We'll show a plan representation of the desk that will change as we choose our various options with arrows and dimensions, similar to how this looks. So let's work on that. So first of all, we're going to need some pictorial representations of what our different desks look like. So because we are saving images for our user interface, we need to make sure that it's looking exactly how we want. So we'll make sure that these are all the same. Set our pens. And what you do is you take a snapshot. I use Snagit, which I find very useful. It's cheap, it's not free, but it is cheap. Windows comes with a snipping tool and Macs have an inbuilt screen capture as well, which is Command Shift 5. So first of all, you need to decide on what size you want your picture to be. That's a bit hard to tell. So what you do is you find something you like. In this case, we've got this, and I reckon we could make ours roughly that same size. So if I use my Snagit tool, and have a look at that. It's telling me that's 182 by 130. So about, let's say about 180 across is what we're after. So I'll zoom so this fills the screen, take my snapshot, and I will take the snapshot of the entire screen every time so that I can resize my three different images the same way. So I'll take that one, take that one, Take this one. Now that I've got them in Snagit, I can crop them exactly the same each time. Now what size do we want these? We wanted them about 180 wide, so image, resize, image. Let's make them, yeah, 180. So now that we have our images scaled, we'll start an image editor of your choice. Could be Photoshop. I use GIMP because it's free and it's good. And we'll just start a new image. Needs to have a clear background, so a transparent background. And we'll make it 300 by 300. Now we'll copy in the images we've just created. So I use the pencil tool, make sure it's one pixel. We'll use this to create our dimensions. So we'll start at two off the mark. To draw a dimension arrow, it's a little triangle in pixels. So one, then another row of three, and then another row of five. And that's all you need to draw your arrow. When you zoom out, it looks pretty good. So that's our overall dimensions. We'll now want a radius. And we'll want a chamfer. So if we look at it at 100%, that's what it's going to look like on our screen. Does that look okay? Yeah, it looks okay. So what we'll do is because we are going to swap out the chamfer and the radius inboxes 
when the corner changes, but we don't actually want the inbox to change places. What we'll do is we'll put a little witness line on our chamfer dim so that our inbox can stay in the same place and add one more to our radius. So if we turn off our radius now, that'll look like that. Might just beef up these outlines. They look a little bit emaciated. So this is our one-to-one -one preview up here. It's probably a bit big, but we'll keep going. It's my chamfer. There's my radius. So now I just need to save out the images each one that I'm going to do. Well, first of all, I'll resize this canvas. Turn off the gray. So we'll start with our square desktop. That's all it is. We'll go file, export. You need to save it to your library and we'll call it BDB square. And you need to make it a PNG or a TIF file. So now if we have a look at those images we've saved, you can see kind of what we're doing here. But let's bring it into ArchiCAD and show you for sure. We just need to reload our libraries. Make sure that before you do, your objects are saved. Or if you don't want to save them, you close them. So we'll reload. Now, if we go to our interface, we can use our UI picture statement. Let's just remind ourselves what it's looking like in here. So we'll put our picture around about the center and we'll see how we go from there. So the statement is UI picked picture reference, X and Y, and optional width, height, and mask. What does that look like? Let's go UI picked. We'll do our square one first, which is desktop square. We don't need to add in the extension. X and Y, check script, missing comma. There we go. Check script, script is okay. It's right down here. So we'll just adjust that a bit. Don't worry about the black, I'll get to that in a minute. So let's go 150, preview. That's closer, I might move it across a little bit. Let's say 120. All right, so that's getting close to what we want. But as you would have noticed, it's got a big black band around it. We don't want that. That is the alpha channel here, the mask. So we see mask, alpha plus distortion. It means we need to activate this mask, and in order to activate this mask, we need to put in the width and the height. In order to do that so it's flexible, if we decide to change our picture, we just put in zero and zero. That's our width and height. And then we will put in our mask of one. So let's have a look now. That looks a lot better, right? That's good. So what we need to do now is put these pictures into their right selections. Check that, rounded, we've got our rounded image, square, we've got our square image, chamfered, we have our chamfered image. Very good. What we will do now is replace these coordinates with variables. Now what we want to do, is we want to shift this chamfer size or rounded size corner radius over to here and we can get rid of that outfield. So I'll grab it here, it's a UI infield. Desktop type equals rounded. What we'll do is we'll make this relative to our picture position. So if we want to adjust our picture then the whole picture and associated infields will move together. So what is it, 150? It's on the rounded, so we'll see what happens. I'll just comment that out. 
needs to go over a bit further and up a bit so 250 10 and you'll find that this is a lot of what you do you just you tweak it you have a look you tweak it you have a look no errors excellent that can come back a bit though doesn't need to be that big either I don't know let's try 70 can come back a bit as well 220 that's looking all right it's probably a little bit far back and can come up a little bit so that's that one rounded chamfered there we go it's the same same infield, same position. We we'll want to put our A and our B sizes in here now. So that is an infield and it'll be relative to our picture the same way that the corner R is. And it will be parameter A. B. We'll leave it at that. Let's have a look. A is too low, can come back and go up a bit. So I'll just sort this out. And we'll put in our B. That's about right. So you've noticed here I've used the same widths a few times as well. So I'll create a variable for that. And I'm not happy with how cramped this is looking, so I want to move this picture down. Because everything now is related to where that picture is located, all I need to do is change my picture Y. That looks okay. Desktop type is rounded, square, and chamfered. Looking okay. No errors were found. Now we've got a diagrammatic indication of what this stuff is. It'd be nice to have a little tooltip pop up, wouldn't it, when we hover over these infields just to tell us what they are. And you can do that. You can do it with the UI tooltip statement. And the UI tooltip statement just gets added to the end of the statement you want it to pop up with. In this case, it's an infield. So we'll just put a UI tooltip at the end of our infields. So for A, it will be UI tooltip. So now when I hover over this, desktop width will pop up. Desktop depth will pop up. And with these ones, So we've got our tooltips in place for all our different conditions. Now it is important to note that these tooltips will only pop up if you've got show tooltips up in your help turned on. So let's save that. Check it out in our environment. Desktop width, depth, corner radius, chamfered, the picture changes, we've got our chamfer size, so the tooltip changes, and of course, it's linked to our object. 85, it's restricted. Let's go 1500. So it's all working, it's working nicely. So I'll wrap this one up there. Now you've got a picture in your user interface making it look pretty neat. So we're not finished yet. I'll see you in the next one.